Hello and welcome to the Flory Models Friday Catch-Up Show. Here we are with you on the 26th of April 2024. Funny week this week. It's one of those ones I'd love to say I've really got on, but because of things gone on uh, with uh, my other half, with the wife and things like that, it's been a little bit disjointed and all over the place because we've been doing a bit of running around with her. So anyway, first of all, big thank you to all the get wells and kind wishes and all the rest of it for her. Unfortunately, she didn't have the surgery yesterday. Uh, because it's the NHS and you know what it's like and by the time they decided actually they wanted some CT scans and all the rest of it it was too late so um, anyway she is back home now she's doing okay she's in a little bit of discomfort with it and all the rest of it but I think mainly she just feels useless because you've got no use of her right hand at all so um, until that gets sort of sorted I think she just feels a bit like a spare part or a wedding type thing so anyway hopefully that will get sorted next week now and go through but it's saying she wanted to thank everybody for the Good wishes. You did have a look through the forum and saw all of those as well. Anyway, that left us with to get on with this one. And to be honest with you, this week I've been pushing on really with this. Wanted to get this one done and out of the way. As I said before, it's something a little bit different from us, something we've never done before uh, as a full build on the actual channel. I've done resin stuff before, which is cast resin, but we've never done a 3D print from start to finish. So we downloaded the file, we resized it to what we wanted for this, and then obviously we've gone through the motions of putting it together and then painting and weathering. And she's almost done. It's not quite as far ahead as you think it is because the plug turned up literally moments ago just as I start to record this it turned up so I thought oh well, that's good I'll quickly drill a hole and quickly mount it on here this isn't going to be the finished mounting position I'm going to actually angle it slightly up and off to one side so you can see underneath it with ease uh, is the plan for this particular one and so I'm going to have something quite nice on the base as well which I'm planning to do with that one but generally we have pushed along with this one we've got the weathering sorted with it now we've done a lot of chipping work onto it because I've done I've done more chipping than weathering I know weathering is chipping but you know what I mean uh, rather than sort of going through with washes and oils and stuff like that so uh, yeah no it's looking very very nice and definitely coming together and again this week we had a review of the much overpriced oh sorry uh, the new release from Ravel uh, for their uh, speeder bike as well anyway it all started on Monday with part five so we were talking going through part five on this particular one going through the motions of it and everything else you see she was still nice and clean back in this point so we were going through and we were hand painting all the details into this so again one of the big things when you're dealing with um, you know like spaceships and stuff like that and sci-fi is you're just trying to get that sort of worn down weathered look to it and again this is cast basically in solid so again it's one of those ones of going around and picking out the details to make them all pop and go through so we use various shades of uh, metalizer type paints going through here and uh, that way we were painting up things like rocker covers uh, and all tank parts and various things as these things are made up from right the way through but as you can see there we go some of the details in there and immediately it starts to come to life then I gave the entire thing an oil wash so it wasn't just a case of just to have it like a pin wash we wanted this to be a filter as well so we wanted it to grind down the color and to give it a sort of more sort of warning look and straight away off the bat that's just an oil wash you can see that then we went through the motions of dry brushing and various things to get this thing together then it was a case of going through and starting to work on the actual pipe work which is a huge job on this because we elected to use uh, uh, coated wire rather than going through the sort of you know the thing of actually putting together the actual 3d printed pipes because a lot of them unfortunately because of the way they're supported and things like that they're not exactly brilliant so I went through and started to do it myself so this is all plastic card and uh, piping and then obviously some of the bending stuff which worked really well was absolutely good on this one and so we've been using the 70 second scale one for references as well going right the way through on this one seeing as how it's going to come together and there we go bending the wires around and getting them all installed and put into place and to be honest it all went very very well on there so again members you can go off and see this one it's around about 30 minutes uh, on that particular video as always then we we're into all things with Matt so uh, myself and Matt for Peer Models, uh, we were going through the motions of obviously what's new and going on in the modelling world. Obviously we were looking at what we have been up to. You can see me there covered in pipework and all the rest of it uh, and what we've been doing. So I was obviously talking about the actual uh, Y-Wing. We were talking about that one, how it's going, coming together with that. I was also talking about the Apache because I want to get back on with the Apache and what a fantastic kit that is. Possibly could be my kit of the year, that one already. Not bad things, it's only my fourth build this month uh, for this year so far uh, so we got that one then Matt was talking about the stuff he's working on so he's working on the p61 uh, as well so he's working on that black widow 
uh, and that's a lovely little 70 second dragon kit and going through the motions of putting that one together as we were talking and we we're talking about some of old classic kits as well that Matt's got hold of so he's got all the old Wessex Humphrey Wessex from Italy which is a very very nice kit indeed and we were looking about the history of the kit and all the various bits and pieces on that one as well plus the fact we Matt had uh, his review uh, up with you as well and this was for his teeny tiny little um what was it ornithopter i think it's called uh review for that one blink and you miss it literally in stature and in uh, the actual review itself because to be honest there's not a great deal uh available on that particular one but you say you can see all about that that's down in there as well if you do want to catch up with the show it is free to watch it is up on social media and all the bits and pieces or of always you can watch it directly on the actual flooring models site as well and then this week it was vlogs with me so we had up the vlog for the um, um, well, Wednesday show, really. Uh, and again, my own personal ramblings and thoughts, which clearly aren't to everyone's taste. That's why it's just for members only. Uh, so, and also we had up review is the review for the speeder bike, which obviously will be available for everyone to watch now. So that is up on the site right now and you can go through with it. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a moment, to be honest with you. Then on Thursday, a really short show, to be honest, on Thursday, because again, I've been running between here and up on the hospital all so obviously getting her back and forth up in there and stuff like that so i wasn't around here i was doing orders and getting other bits and pieces out rather than building but again the actual as you can see doing more work we were doing more chipping work and various things on this one pushing on to get the actual y wing finished off and that brings you bang up to today and that actually gets us to pretty much doing all the piping work and getting the final little uh, bits done with this one so as you can see we've got the pipe work on and painted now uh, to be honest with you some of the more complex curves I actually like these ones on the back I wasn't happy with those ones that I had bent because my bending skills aren't perfect so we actually 3d printed those ones off and some of the pipe work we've done in 3d as well so I 3d printed some of the more complex curves that I was struggling with like these little kinks up on these here so this one here and this one here I 3d printed those purely because I was struggling to get the right kinks in the right places uh, but the rest of them are all coated wire right the way through and you can see really starts to bring it to life now top and bottom and start with we've just got one coat of uh, color onto that one down in there with the silver and as you'll see in a minute we've upgraded that further the other big thing uh, which is obviously a problem when you're dealing with 3d printed stuff is a lack of clear parts technically uh, luckily for us they're not totally just flat uh, but they're not far off of it so we just use some very, a very thin uh, clear plastic card and uh, sort of an acetate sheet and then we just marked them out roughly because we gave us a ballpark idea and then we actually PVA glued these into place right the way through got them to curve around and bend in conform and all the rest of it and then we got some gasket seals on there as well with PVA glue just to seal them all properly down into place and okay once they were dried they worked absolutely beautifully no problem at all and from the outside you'd never know so uh, it looks really really good in there just like that so I was happy with that with that section done it was time to actually get it mated up so we cut the pipes to the correct length and then obviously we've actually got the forward sort of cockpit fuselage section onto the main fuselage parts of it down in there dab of super glue and that completes it off there just like that and that gets us somewhat to as you can see here she is now so again, it's now mounted up on the display. I'm now, I suppose I should take it off so I can show you. So it should unplug. And now we've painted up. So we've gone through a lot of weathering, a lot of chipping work. You can probably see really just to wear it down, beat it down just a little bit, get it all together. Forget the R2 unit at the top. He's just a, a well, I thought I'd do him in green for something different, but I'm not too happy with the green, so I might repaint him in a minute. Uh, but again, some of the pipe work now we've picked out in different colours. So uh, the pipe work isn't just sort of one universal colour, because that's how I sprayed them all to start with. That so we've gone around and hand painted some of the more of the details in. We've gone around, we've done the chipping and all the other bits and pieces. And underneath here, you can see just to sort of weather it down, get it all looking very much the part, as you can see. Really had had a lot of fun with this. And I hate to say it, people, but this is the future of modeling or scale modeling. Because, you know, when you can print something off like this at home, and I printed this off for around about, I suppose, including the file, everything, around about £45 it's cost. That's buying the actual file for the model itself, and then in resin and reprints and all the rest of it. It's probably going to be somewhat the future for certain stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying for everything, don't get me wrong, the haters are out there, I love this. But uh, I think it all, some, you know, the day's going to come where it's going to sort of take over. But anyway, we have been weathering in there. We have got a few little bit more to do on this one. Go through some other bits and pieces. 
but uh, it's really starting to to come together now and uh, I think really by the end of the weekend we should be completely finished off so I said really the last thing to this one a couple more little bits on here and then what I want to do is I'm going to put an angle so I'm going to have this thing and then hopefully I want it to be sitting a little bit like that is how it's going to be set so it's somewhat a little bit of an angle and a little bit up just to make it a little bit more interesting with its movement but for the moment it can sit on there and be quite nice so with that one pushing along really well so technically the final parts of this will be up with you probably going to be some part next week all right so it might be next friday i'll get the next part up with that one and as i said before we're going to really be pushing along then with the apache which is down in here which i'm really excited about it's looking really really nice so looking forward to getting back onto that one because that is literally a dream build uh, working on that one so yes lots of fun with there um so the other thing as well if i can find a little thing there we go if we just go up to reviews so in the reviews we have the actual mandalorian uh speeder bike which you do get the figure for it and all the rest of it but unfortunately i just i found it very difficult to get behind this kit purely because it's lack of detail and i said before and i've been very outspoken on the members only shows about i'm sure the licensing fee is swallowing up the build quality uh, and the detail and i appreciate that they've probably done this to a level where you don't have to be a particularly skilled modeler to put it together it's more designed really for perhaps shifting units than it is over its source but at the end of the day it's still a model kit and i just think this is really really basic and when you look at the price of this thing it's roughly around about 60 quid and you can go out and get the Bandai one. And the Bandai one used to be 50. And I think you can still get it for around about sort of 70 pounds. The Bandai one knocks this into a cop hat. The quality and the detail of the plastic is very, very poor. Uh, it's more like a snap tight kit than it is a proper kit. Uh, and all the rest of it. There's no poseable figure either. It's just a seated one doing the old uh, Gundam style. Uh, and again, the quality of the plastic isn't too brilliant either. It's uh, it's quite weak especially the, with the white and the black as well. The black isn't a nice black and the white isn't a nice white. So although it is what it is uh, at the end of the day, oh, and this, the base is appallingly bad, but uh, it is what it is, I suppose. So if you do fancy going out and you want to do the, uh, as I call it, Disney-fied version of the speeder bike, i.e. they've curved off the front so it hasn't got sharp blades, there's no angles on it anymore. So uh, you'll be actually quite happy with that one. But it is. But honestly, if you want a speeder bike, I would pay the extra 10, 20 quid and go out and get one from abroad. Unfortunately, you don't seem to be any left in the UK, but definitely go out and get the Bandai one. And uh, down below in the show notes for this, and it's on the show notes of the actual video itself, you can click on it. And there is the review for the Bandai kit uh, as well that we was talking about. Because to be honest with you, I've done the full reviews. You can see down in here of it. And that kit is a beautiful kit typical you know bandai right the way through don't really even need to paint it if you didn't want to but if you do you end up with something stunning where this thing's just a little bit near and i just think it's really a little bit overpriced if i'm honest in there all right one thing that's not overpriced though is our incredible deals over at the pm model store so down in there we've got a couple of uh, hawkeyes as well so sorry skyhawks so we got the actual uh 148 scale hobby boss kits so if you fancy any of those and to go along there we've got a trio of the gorgeous mini art 48 scale thunderbolts and again different uh versions down in there as well so these are the 25 re ones and the 30 re as well but again different marking options down in there as well so you've got the advanced kit with the actual gun bays and a few other bits and pieces around the engine and then obviously you've got the more basic kits just down in there as well so again i think for the price when you're looking at 32 quid you know it's a little bit of a non-brainer and i suppose that's why i'm getting somewhat angry about these things because let's face it this here 70 quid kit for that you'd be really disappointed and then you pay 32 pounds for one of those and i'd be more than happy because i think that's a great kit uh, and it's a beautiful bit of kit and goes together really really nicely and everything and it just gets my goat a little bit with the prices that we're having to pay i think for some of these kits and i'm concerned that as i said ravel is spending more money on licensing to get the license to do with this than they actually are on the plastic that's inside it and if that's the going on then that's wrong on every level you don't mind paying licensing and all the rest of it hell i do it myself for a lot of the stuff i do but the bit where you're paying all the money up front is all going on license so what you're producing is a mediocre kit that's beginning to grate me just a little bit so anyway Anyway, that's about it from me. As always, on a Friday, I'm going to leave you with great work from the gallery. So until Monday, everybody, happy modeling. Take care. I was not ready to fall in like I'm wasted.
say.